we're going to talk to you about ionising radiation. There are three types of ionising radiation. These are alpha, beta and gamma. We're going to tell you about the different properties of the types of radiation. Alpha is, resembles a helium nucleus and has a positive charge. Beta resembles a fast moving electron and has a negative charge. Gamma has no matter and is a ray with high energy, it has no charge. Alpha is weakly penetrating, it can be stopped by just a few centimetres of air or a sheet of paper like this. Beta is mid-penetrating, it, it can be stopped by thin metal or tin foil. Gamma is strongly penetrating, it can only be stopped by lead several centimetres thick. Alpha can only travel about 10 centimetres. Beta can travel a metre. Gamma can travel for an unlimited time. The World Bowling Championships and our contenders are Vicious Vicky with Alpha, represented by a melon. Next up we have Malicious Merrin using Beta, represented by a grape. Last up we have Angry Amy using Gamma, represented by air. First up we have Vicky. Let's see Vicky bowl with Alpha. Good shot and it's a strike for Vicky! Next up we have Beta, let's see how Beta does. Oh, one falls, but it's not a brilliant result. So we have Gamma. Let's see how she does. Has Gamma bowled? It's hard to tell, but nope, there's no movement. And that concludes the World Bowling Championships. In last was Angry Amy with Gamma. In second, Malicious Merrin with her beta. And the winner was Vicky with Alpha. Amy, I'm stuck on my physics homework. What does ionising mean? Um, I don't know. Ask Merrin. Um, yeah, I know. You see, ionising is when a type of radiation knocks one of the uh, negatively charged electrons of an atom, which means it then has more positively charged protons, meaning the atom becomes positively charged. Obviously. Vicky, how is ionising radiation dangerous? I can't remember. Um, no. What's Marin? One. It's because when the um, atoms that have been ionised um, become positively charged, then they can be replicated. And if you get too many replicated positively charged atoms, it can be very bad, especially if they attract to some negative charged atoms. This is the structure of an atom. In the nucleus, in the centre, there are neutrons which have a neutral charge and protons which have a positive charge. Around the shells, on the ed around the edges, there are electrons which have a negative charge. Careful, it's unstable. Yes. Um, isn't that a bit like why, radio why atoms are radioactive in the first place? Yeah, I am thinking that too. It's because this is like a big unstable tower and you get atoms that are big and unstable. And to make this more stable, we could take layers off it to make it smaller, and that would be like an atom decaying to become smaller. And when they decay, they become radioactive. That makes so much more sense. Hello, I'm the production manager. Oh, how's, how's it going? going? Um, yeah, it's going quite well, thanks. You see, the beta transmitter up there is putting beta rays down and through the paper. And then the receiver down there is picking them up so they know that the beta that is coming through the paper is always a set amount to make sure the paper is always a set thickness. See? Fabulous. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Bye. Oh, hi again. Do you remember me? I was the one with the broken arm. Yeah, it's, it's mostly better now, but I've got a blocked kidney, you see. Well, I might, so I'm having it checked out. Your tumor's still around. No, I'm here for a check-up. Check it's gone. Oh, good luck with the check-up then. Mmm. It's nice this private room of the hospital, isn't it? You get cushions and drapes and everything. Ooh. <laughs> Marion ties it to the doctor, please. Oh, that's me. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Hi there. Um, you see, I've got a blocked kidney. Well, I think I have. I'm not sure. So I just wanted to get it checked out. Okay, well if you take this radioactive substance, 
It will travel through to your kidneys and if we can detect it after a couple of hours, your kidneys aren't working properly. But if, if we can't detect it, it will pass through and we will know the kidneys are working properly. Oh, okay. Um, I've left it for a while and yeah, this is the urine to see if there's a radioactive source in it. Thanks. Well yeah, there's lots of radioactive source in it, so it looks as if your kidneys are working fine. Oh, excellent. Can I have this back? Yeah. Great. Mmm, <laughs> cake. This cake represents a radioactive substance, in case you hadn't noticed. And I'm going to use this to tell you about half-life. You see, if this radioactive substance had a half-life of, say, 10 days, then after 10 days, half of its atoms would have decayed, which would be like taking away half the cake. Then, after another 10 days, another half of the cake would be gone. Do you get the idea? Yeah. So then, after another 10 days, half would have gone. Another half would have gone. This is what would be happening with the atoms. And half again. Cake? Where's the cake gone? Amy! What are you doing for your physics homework, Vicky? About how radioactive sources can be useful, like fire alarms. Oh yeah, isn't it because they need something with a long half-life to detect the fire alarms, so it doesn't run out quickly? Yeah. Ah. They become unstable and try to stabilise themselves by decaying. Although isotopes can be stable, on average an element has 3.2 stable isotopes. And the element with the most amount of isot stable isotopes is tin, with 10, followed by xenon, which is 9. Some elements have, un have radioactive isotopes which are unstable, but have a half-life with a huge difference. For example, plutonium-244 has a half-life of 80.8 .8 million years, but at the same time, plutonium also has eight isotopes with a half-life of less than a second. I always eat my physics homework till the last minute. Yeah, me too. Um, well, I'm hearing about how we observe radiation. What about you? Geiger counter with GM tube or probe. I remember. We used one of them in class. Yeah, it's a um, gas-filled device that when a high voltage is applied, uh, it creates an electrical pulse, and when radiation interacts with the wall or gas in the tube. Yeah, these pulses are converted to a reading on the instrument meter. And, yeah, do you remember? If the instrument has a speaker, it gives off a click. Do you remember from class? Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, I've actually got a mini compact uh, guide counter here. Wow. Look, most things actually give off some radiation because it's background radiation. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you hear you No element has eight stable isotopes. Really? Well, sorry, two can play at that game. Did you know that on average an element has 3.20 stable isotopes? Be that. This, this Planet Virtual Production was presented by all of us, filmed by all of us, except me, and researched by all of us. <laughs>